Yes, thank you, Wout. So the first keynote of today is all about finding an API security approach that fits your requirements and ambitions. My name is Peter van den Boek and I'm an integration architect at Arches and I have a high focus on API security over the last couple of years. So let's kick things off and start about talking about one of the hottest topics of the API community of 2021, which is API security. As we all know, APIs establish an important channel to our enterprise services, systems, and data. It's of the utmost importance that you keep a high focus on API security to prevent business loss, reputations loss, or even competitive gains, and so much more. As none of us want to become the next news item, like for example, Facebook was a couple of months ago, who accidentally uh, exposed personal information of 50 million of their members. You might wonder, why just now? Because most of us are creating APIs over a couple of years already. So why is the focus of API security only coming now? We can identify multiple drivers for this higher focus the last year. I'm going to mention a couple of them. So the first one I want to mention is the digitalization. We see more and more organizations reacting on the citizen IT wave by going digital. They're creating more digital products and services as their customers are expecting this. With this digitalization, more information and functionality is getting exposed outside the boundaries of our company, so we need an additional focus on the security of them. But in order to benefit most of your digitalization, you also need to bring these products and services to the right stakeholders. So we see organizations targeting a non-digital approach for this in order to extend their market reach. These channels can be their own, but can also be third party or partner channels. So securing your own front-end applications is always a good idea, but it's also required to secure your APIs as well, as this is the one thing that you have control over even with the partner or third party channels. And last one that I want to mention is regulations and privacy. Depending on your business, it's also possible that due to some regulations from the government, you, have, you are required to do some kind of authorization or API security. Additionally, the API landscape will be growing because you're going more and more digital. You will be creating more and more APIs. So your tech service will be larger and larger. This means that also API attacks are on a steep rise. In fact, Gartner predicts that APIs will become the number one attack factor by 2022. And we don't have to, we can't forget that even our threat actors, so the attackers, are well motivated but also well funded to do the attacks on APIs. And we see the industry reacting on this. Let's think about the OWASP uh, API security top 10, which gives a, a good overview of all the, all the biggest risks on APIs. But when we start thinking about API security, we immediately think about authentication and authorization aspects. But if we look at the OWASP top 10, we only see four to five of those risks being related to authentication and authorization. So API security, end-to-end -end might be more than you expect. There's also something to do on traffic management, but also on information management, as these are the other five or six top 10 risks that OWASP is defining. So it's not only putting some authorization, authorization aspects on your API, also traffic management and information. So I'm going to zoom in into the three topics in the next slide. The first uh, topic I want to zoom in is authentication and authorization. You might think, okay, let's apply OWASP 2, which is an industry standard for API security, and we're done. But it's very unlikely that you will have an API landscape where you can apply a one size fits all. So let me explain. What we strongly advise is to categorize your APIs into different security levels. We recommend to determine some characteristics of your APIs to define the correct security level on this. You can't let it be driven by the temper of the day. Um, and we see a little earlier, we see so a couple of categories which are used to determine these uh, security levels. For example, you can link it to the CIA model, which being the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the information that you expose to your APIs. 
but that can be harder to determine because how do you come to identify the confidentiality level if it's low or high you have to have some frameworks for this as well but it can also be driven by the fact that you have some governance policies that you need to follow of even uh, an, uh, an easier way to determine let's say if you don't expose any public apis you don't want to have any open apis to, that everyone can use then you might also take an approach that every api that is exposed outside the boundaries of your network that you secure them so you have to find a way which is pliable for your organizations and also for the maturity of your organization as a next step you don't have to jump in into determining your technical mechanisms yet it's not because you determined, okay, you want to have some kind of security on the APIs that you already know which technical mechanism is the best for you. You have to determine it based on the requirements and ambitions. So I'm going to go, go into three options for three different levels, but it's just for, yeah, for, in, for reference. It's possible that in your organization, you determine three different levels with different requirements and different ambitions, but these three levels are three that are typically used in organizations. Let me start with the lowest level of security, for example. You can say, okay, this is typically our open APIs, the APIs that we want to expose to the highest uh, group of stakeholders with the most easy way to use them. So you can think, okay, we're not going to do anything related to authentication and authorization for those APIs. On the other hand, what you can do there is, say okay we do nothing or do one step up and one step up could be an identification um, aspect this can be just by providing an api key in each of the requests that's nothing to authentication authorization but at least gives you some kind of accountability on who your consumer was and the higher you go you can start with requirements and ambitions that both your clients or your end user authenticates himself and needs to be authorized to do the API call. And if you would go to a higher level, there the distinction is between the two that you, the way that the, the client or the end user authenticates himself can be done by, for example, one factor authentication or multi factor authentication. You can mix it up a little bit by also doing higher um, requirements as of the first step, but you have to find a good uh, balance on these. Uh, requirements and ambitions. And it's only then when everything of previous is clear that you can start by defining your actual mechanisms. So depending on your organization, the mechanisms can be different. It's likely that you will do OAuth. It's likely that you will do an API key, but it's not guaranteed that this is the required solution. But what you definitely have to do is create security patterns. Because it's not since you defined your levels and your requirements that is clear for everyone on which mechanism needs to be used for which API. But also it's very important to clearly define in your patterns in which of the components in your chain that you're going to uh, apply those controls. Because you will likely have, which we'll see in some of my uh, next slides, a network gateway, an API gateway and actual API implementation. The goal of these patterns is to clearly define what is the role of each building block in the end-to-end -end pattern. I'm not going to zoom in more in detail on these different levels because Tom Peters has a very interesting presentation which comes up right afterwards where he explains how which levels are taken within Colrad but also how they are going to classify their security levels. So stay tuned for the presentation of Tom. So now the second pillar, which is traffic management. So you might think by adding authentication and authorization to my APIs that they are well protected, but you might be wrong because as mentioned, some of your APIs will have nothing to be applied on authentication and authorization level. So the first security level was just identification, which has nothing to do with authentication and authorization. So they are not secured, but even if they are secured in the next two levels, you might, and you even trust your partners, it might not be always intentional that, you, that they're doing things wrong. Think about the programming error, which results instead of 100 calls into 1 million calls in every five minutes, or even your partner's applications can be hacked, can be breached. So attackers can also target you through hacked systems of partners. So you must also be aware that 
to have an end-to-end secure API that's not only authentication authorization. So if we talk about traffic management, we can identify basically two different levels. The first level is based on the application or on API level. So there are controls that you typically manage for each API specifically. This can be things like, for example, um, rate limiting and throttling, because not all your APIs will have the exact same possibilities on rate and throttling that you want to apply. And on transport level, that are typically the controls that you are applying on basically all your APIs, so all traffic coming in, which is typically something about threat detection like SQL or injection techniques and things like that. So that's on the transport level typically. And the last pillar I want to mention is the information management. So you can do whatever you want on the scope of your API by determining authentication authorization and traffic management. But if you don't classify or shield your information in a sufficient way, it is possible that you leak some kind of information through your API that you don't want. Because the moment that you expose your API uh, information through your API, it is accessible by whoever uses your API. You can't trust that the consumers of your API will do some kind of information shielding or filtering within their own front-end applications or their own front applications. The moment you expose it, it is accessible. So you have to really think on what, which information you want to expose through your APIs, because then it's up for grabs. So mentioned three different um, pillars to have an end-to-end -end, uh, secure API. And questions that we also see happening in trauma organizations is how do we bring all these API security aspects together? Because if, if you see here on the right, you see a typical network topology where you see at the bottom the actual API implementation. On top of that, an API gateway and then a network gateway. Because these are typically components or layers that we see within the organizations being available. And Typically, the API gateway was introduced a couple of years ago within organizations, and they already had a network gateway. So discussions will arise on which of the gateways or which of the components in our chain do we need to apply for which aspects if it comes to security. Well, on the left, I provide some kind of indication on what we typically see happening. Um, the amount of how the, the bar is filled can be different for each organization, but this is just an indication which basically which component provides most of these uh, functionalities. So at the top, we see the global restrictions only being linked to the network gateway. Linking it to our traffic management um, pillar, we see that network gateway typically uh, handle everything which is related to traffic management on transport layer. So basically everything that needs to apply to on all your traffic that's coming in into your organization. It might be weird that I also listed authentication and authorization here, because as mentioned, you have to do it on specific security levels of your APIs. But what we see happening there is something like things that they handle like pre-authentication and so ever and for the fail fast principle. So it's possible that they also do some kind of authentication and pre-authentication on the network topology. Information shielding, we typically don't see happen on the network gateway. And if you go more to the bottom of the chain, then we see the API specific requirements of restrictions. So the API gateway also does a lot of things when it comes to traffic management, but it's more linked to the application layer then, because on the API gateway, you manage your APIs. So there you also manage your policies specifically to those APIs. Also authentication and authorization is filled quite a lot. Um, if we compare it with how it's filled in the API layer, we see that the API gate layer is filled more than on the actual API implementation. The reason for that is, is because API gateways typically have a lot of features to, the, to support all kinds of security mechanisms out of the box. It's basically one of their core businesses. On the API implementation platforms, it's likely that the support is there, but it's also likely to have to do some kind of custom development and things like that to have the full support. So that's why we shifted more to the API gateway and also um, contributes to the basically the fail fast principle of uh, API security. Yeah? And information shielding, then we've postponed most to the API implementation, 
where you will see that we do no traffic management because all traffic management uh, functionalities were already covered on our gateways. So we don't really need to act or do anything on our API implementation level as such. But when we talk about API security, it basically also touch all the pillars of the of our API program. Um, so also in a previous session also uh, that we had with uh, Colrad and Dries van Marke, where I explained the entire API journey, he explained all the, how they applied all those different pillars in from an API program in their organization. But of course, the same goes for API security, of course. Um, I'm not going to zo zoom in again in all these pillars because in the presentation of Tom Peters, he will give a very good example on how, an, how to uh, take that kind of an approach to have a really end-to-end -end API security approach and also introduce it in your organization in a correct way. So stay tuned for uh, Tom Peters' his his, um, presentation. That was all that I wanted to uh, mention in my introduction uh, keynote. So uh, now it's time for a short Q&A session. Yep. Uh, and then we will go to uh, the presentation of Tom.